Today is Friday, the 13th of September, 2024, and I'm going to share with you an NBC News clip uh, related to Haitians who are currently residing in Springfield and um, the impact that Trump's comments during the the debate are supposedly having on those uh, residents. But I would first ask, as you're learning to dissect the news, that you consider that cancer is a failure of cells to be able to communicate effectively with one another. And as a result, there is an abnormal growth that it that goes unrestrained and becomes a tumor. Um, and if it is not contained, will continue to get worse until it overtakes the body and it is not functioning properly at all. And how the news and propaganda can be used in ways that become like a cancer on the earth. There is no reason that a person who is being interviewed about their personal experiences could not be videoed um, so that they are able to speak for themselves. And that's the kind of reporting that you really need to be leery of in terms of whether or not it is factual. It doesn't mean that you need to discard all of the information shared, but you should certainly take into consideration when people are not given the opportunity to speak for themselves in their own voice. Thank you very much. So as we talk about Springfield, Ohio, let's bring in you, Michelle Sandor, who has made her way to Springfield for us tonight. Well, the tension here in Springfield, Ohio, is palpable. People are definitely worried that these baseless claims about Haitian immigrants abusing pets are really going to impact life here. Haitian immigrants are very worried. There's, some of them are telling me that they're scared to walk the streets because they're worried that they might be targeted and that people might actually be violent with them. So it's very heartbreaking to hear their stories because they fled insecurity in Haiti, and now they say that they're feeling insecurity here in Springfield. Meanwhile, there are some residents who believe these unfounded allegations and say that they're credible. They also say that they don't want this community, one person told me uh, yesterday. They don't want this community to turn into a Haitian community. They say they want to keep it an American community. Of course, there are critics of that who say, well, the story of America is that communities do change. You have uh, Germans and Polish people and Irish people, all sorts of people from other countries come here and make America their home. But the other thing I should note is that there's a lot of tension here, and that also possibly, we're not sure if it's connected, but there was a bomb threat, um, a number of bomb threats, and that caused the evacuation of City Hall and a number of other buildings, including an elementary school. Authorities are saying that they're working with the FBI to investigate. They're not sure who made those allegations and made that bomb threat. They also aren't sure whether it's connected to these baseless claims. That being said, Karine Jean-Pierre, the White House press Secretary, she talked about this issue. Take a listen to what she said. It is undignified and an insult to all of us as Americans, not just one community, but to all of us as Americans. And it is spreading filth that makes the lives of the communities that are being smeared here, it puts their lives in danger. And just today, former President Donald Trump is now doubling down on those comments. Again, comments about Haitians abusing animals and saying that there are some people that are coming here from prisons. What we do know is that these Haitian immigrants are coming legally here by the thousands in the last few years, but also they're coming here, they say, to have a better life. But it's definitely a political story that is continuing. Back to you. You may stay. It is 6 a.m on Thursday, March the 21st. And I wanted to share some reflections I was having as I thought about what's going on in Haiti. Um, because back in, I believe it was October, 2023, um, I did a whole um, series of community posts about community organizing um, in the correct way as a protective militia. So this is, different than what they're the some of the people are doing in Haiti and different from what the Black Panthers evolved into after their initial founder was um, jailed and then murdered and essentially I asked them to reconsider the leadership within their community because people really have lost um, their understanding of what a mature elder is and then not only that they are unable to 
accurately assess the leadership skills or abilities of those that are that they would deem uneducated and so i um talked about or i shared a um, clip from the video you just saw or i showed the, uh, the entire thing and asked whether or not um, miss bonita was a good block captain and whether or not she is someone that you would select as your block captain and ultimately what i wanted people to understand is what her strengths are you know when you are in a situation where the entire community is being attacked one way or another and you want to set up a guard post to prevent people who want to assimilate into the community but um there are people who have been in the community long enough that they know when it's someone coming in who does not live there or is not from there what type of person you would choose to do that and i said bonita would be a good choice one because she is friendly and she didn't automatically assume that the person she's talking to was a threat and even had a conversation with them before she asked them why they were there and the other thing thing is that um, she uh, is very knowledgeable of people in the community. So if someone said that they were looking for someone in particular, she would be able to ascertain whether or not that's someone who actually lives in the community and what kind of receptivity they might have to a stranger coming in. But her capacity to be able to assess that this person is a visitor, this is some, not somebody who is from here, in a large community project um, makes her a real asset and she's funny so um, I want you to reconsider um, what the whole of Haiti is trying to do to cope with the climate there right now because I do not believe that everyone there is in support of gang violence um, or even the uh, retaliation of the um uh, police there who ha have been complaining that they are under resourced for the problem but i do believe this video that i have just highlighted which i will show the i will play the clip for you of um shows a community where they it appears to me that they are doing exactly what i was suggesting in terms of trying to protect um, the people within their own community from all of the violence that's occurring. It's really important that all of us have the capacity to do that and not to assume that what the media shows us is an accurate depiction of how people are dealing with the situation. They seem very clear, even the gang members, that they do not want to leave Haiti. They want to stay there and they want things to be better. And so the question really needs to be, what is it they want? And is it realistic for them to have those things and then to understand why they cannot? 